Hey, good morning. Welcome to the strangest week in the Christian calendar. This is a weird week because we are just coming off the Advent season. We just celebrated Christmas, but yet we don't want to start our new year in a new series quite yet with a new outlook. So we've kind of got this strange week here in the middle. Uh, so what to do with this week? Well, uh, we, would, are, we are going to be reading Mark chapter 1, a little bit in Mark chapter 1 here in just a moment. So you can go ahead and find that. And as you do, uh, this year, uh, this year I sat down with our elders and we discussed what we would be looking at at this week specifically. Uh, and then generally we discussed what we would be doing all the way through Easter so yes, I know it seems like a long way out, uh, but I do plan quite a ways out. So what we are going to do is kind of pull away from the normal this week, this idea of series and, and, and in-depth studies, uh, take time away from all that and look at and reflect on our 2020 year. We're going to review the goals this, uh, this week review those goals from 2020, and then I want to look forward to our purpose and kind of what we're going to rally around into 2021. And then I will share a little bit about what we are going to experience over those next 12 to 13 weeks leading into Easter. All right, so that's kind of our plan for today, but let's start off with just a little scripture reading from Mark chapter 1. And I am going to read verses 35 through 39. So Mark chapter 1, starting in verse 35, reading through verse 39. And it says this, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Verse 38, Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. So it says, Very early in the morning. Early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place to pray. Jesus got up, went off by himself to pray, to discover where he was to go, to hear from God, to gain clarity on his mission in this world. And I think that that is always so important for us to do when we talk about our purpose and mission in our communities. To take time to pray about our mission and purpose in our world. Rather that, rather that be in a foreign country or our local area or our place of work or even, even in our own homes. It's so important. To t it, it takes us praying and asking and listening where does God call you for your mission and purpose? And, and, then, and then taking that time to talk with others about it. You know, I, I read an article this week about planning for your own purpose and mission in life. And it, it talked about talking, uh, taking the time to hear from God, slowing down to meditate on God's word, reading scripture. And then the, the article kind of uh, said, pay attention to the verses and things that other people use during the week because God may be using them to reinforce or redirect your efforts. And I think that is such a great idea, a good, insightful idea. Uh, and that is why we are called into a community, right? To be a community of believers, not just to head off on our own, but to also be among a community of believers to receive support and guidance and encouragement from each other, from other believers. And so it's so important in our walk. So 
Speaking of encouragement, I want to start off, uh, like we said, we're going to start off by talking about our 2020 goals from last year. This week, we will be removing all those sticky notes that you guys have been posting out there, and we are going to be replacing it with something else. More to that, more to come, more of that to come in a minute. There you go. Sometimes it gets a little rough to to speak. Uh, But I want to say 2020, it was our goal to have two baptisms, 20 in a small group, 202 times that we as a body would share our faith, and then 2,020 hours of volunteer for a nonprofit. Now, the results, well, this year we did have two baptisms. Uh, So our first goal was achieved, uh, 20 in a small group, you know, we honestly had double that over the year, which is absolutely crazy to think that we had, even during this pandemic, so many still meeting together. Some, granted, some were virtual, but it was the effort that you all took in order to meet together and grow in your walk. That was so awesome. Good job. You guys are awesome. Nice job. Thirdly, 202 times of sharing your faith. Again, you guys blew this out of the water. You guys told me stories of almost daily sharing your faith in one way or another with people at work or where you shopped or with family or with friends. It was just so much sharing who God is and what he means in your life that was going on in our body. Again, great job. You guys are awesome. And finally, 2,020 hours of service to a nonprofit. And here was the really crazy one. Uh, As you know, we had our wall out there, and you guys were posting the times that you spent. uh, The wall showed 1,500 hours. So close. But, but I know there were so many more hours contributed volunteers that came in and cleaned this church every week, but yet only two months anyone took credit for it. So many of you worked on Operation Christmas Child. No one posted any of that time. I also know that some of you did your own projects where you went out and you found something that was a passion for you and you organized it, you scheduled it, you did what you wanted, what needed to be done for that, and you did that, and you put a lot of time and effort into it, but yet never put it on the wall. I mean, I think of how many hundreds of masks were made or monsters from our monster ministry created, but not a single hour was posted for that. And I know, you guys, I'm on to you. I know about it. And I know that some of you, I know some of you who did so many things and you decided, well, it was a form of bragging and you didn't want to post anything. So, all right, but I still know about it. And so I am very confident to say that this church in the midst of a pandemic still contributed well over 2,000 hours of service to this church, to our community, even to our world, to help others and to make life better for other people in our world. So again, I say, awesome guys, awesome job. You guys are amazing. So with that, I wanna take a moment to say this. Thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart Thank you. I am so overwhelmed by all your generosity and the love that you share for others. How you have poured out your love to help others is unimaginable. And I am truly blessed to be here with you. So let me say again, thank you. Now, if you remember, I said last week or two weeks ago, I can't remember which, but uh, I said this church, the, the church as a whole, the church universal doesn't celebrate enough. And so I thought we really need to celebrate this achievement of meeting these goals in 2020. And so how 
should we celebrate this? I really wanted to really celebrate and be excited about this because this really excites me that we met this goal. And so if anyone has any ideas of how we can celebrate this, let me know. Uh, maybe we can do something in the spring or summer to celebrate. You know, I look, I looked at, I looked online at the churches around the world. These are big churches with great leaders and to, to share their wisdom. And I'm looking at how they celebrate, and all of their celebrations were like, "We have a potluck, we have a dinner, we invite people to come for a meal at the church." And I'm like, "Okay, listen." Obviously, I love a good meal as much as the next guy, but there has to be a way to celebrate without a feast, right? We shouldn't have to eat every time we come together. So church, please come up with some ideas for celebration. Let's do a celebration of, of what we've achieved in 2020. Come talk to me about it. Message me. Talk to a board member about it. I really, really would like to have some good ideas to celebrate not just 2020, but even celebrations in 2021. Because after all, like a year, uh, after a year like 2020, we need some celebration. So take some time, pray about it. Let us know. So now for 2021, let's, uh, let's shift gears and see what we're going to do uh, in 2021. As we all know, as we all have lived through 2020 has been a remarkable year and honestly we are not too sure of what 2021 will bring i mean obviously i doubt i doubt much is going to change by friday right when 2021 comes in and so 2021 will be starting off very similar to this year that we are leaving so your elders and I, like I said, we sat down, we discussed what we want to rally around as we head into 2021, and we decided on three things. We're going to rally around these three things, reconnect, regroup, and re-energize. Regroup, I'm sorry, reconnect, regroup, and re-energize. Since we don't know what 2021 will bring, we're not going to put numbers to this or measurables on these goals, but what we are asking you to do is to take time and first of all, like Jesus did, pray. We're asking you to take time to pray. Reconnect with God. Make 2021 a year that is marked by prayer and growth. Reconnecting with your Father in heaven. Also asking that we take, we, we ask that you look to reconnect with each other. I mean, 2020 has been a taxing year on the mental health of so many people, these isolations, the quarantines. Listen, people need human contact. That's why solitary confinement is a punishment. And so in 2021, we're, we're asking you to reconnect with others. Man, maybe, you, maybe looking at version and doing a study with other people to reconnect both with God and with each other at the same time. And, and honestly, I, I am hoping and praying that this summer, will be so much better and more open and that maybe reconnecting with friends with a cookout in the warm sunshine. Man, doesn't that sound awesome? Uh, so first, reconnect. I want us to look at reconnecting. Work this year to reconnect with God and with others. Number two, regroup. Regroup is defined as to cause to reassemble into organized group, typically after being attacked or defeated. Now, I read that definition. I don't know about you, but 2020 seems like it beat us up pretty bad. And after being attacked or defeated, a lot of things have changed in our world. And things are continuing to change. And so maybe we need to regroup, maybe reorganize, maybe look at how we can affect the world in a different way, rethinking what or how and why we do the things we do. So reconnect, regroup, and then lastly, re-energize. Again, as we look ahead to 2021, we are looking to re-energize a lot of our ministries, 
to re-energize the things that we do in our church. Again, we are looking at mission trips again. Uh, by the way, our conference has, again, put out a few, a scaled-back version of our Axe teams. Uh, our Axe team trips are uh, going to be taking place this year, so if you're interested in that, let me know. We are also looking and seeking to re-energize our small groups, our fellowship with one another, re-energizing a time for prayer. I mean, 2020 has been such a drain. We need to recharge and re-energize. So 2021, reconnect, regroup, and re-energize. So let's do this. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for a new year to begin, right? It's coming. So we covered today already, we've covered our 2020 recap. We've covered our rally point for 2021. So now let's look real briefly as we close at our upcoming weeks of what we are looking forward to. And as you know, uh, I really haven't had a much opportunity to share this. I had an amazing opportunity uh, to visit Israel and see so many amazing places that we read about through Scripture. And I, as I saw these places and I began to understand this complexity of distances and elevation and geographical features, the Bible begins to take on another dimension. And I really want to bring that to you as well. And so as many of you have experienced, maybe on Christmas Eve, that view of the shepherd's field, uh, which if you didn't, it's, it is on YouTube, there is something gained by having that visual. It adds and enriches the reading of Scripture. And so over the next 12 or 13 weeks leading up to Easter, we are going to be talking about the story of Christ. We're going to work through Scripture, taking the story of Christ from its beginnings as in what we did on Christmas Eve and the birth of Christ. And we are going to read through Scripture. And as we read through Scripture leading to Christ's death and resurrection, I'm going to provide pictures from the Holy Land so that you can see the visuals of the places that are being talked about. And I'll talk about those in geographical context of what's going on. And we will do that all the way to Calvary and on to the resurrection and, and even the ascension. So I am really excited to share these with you. Uh, let's face it, we humans, we are such visual creatures. We retain so much more when we see something beyond just hearing. So I'm excited to share these places, these pictures with you as we study scripture, as we learn of Jesus' time on earth, as he walks his way all the way to Easter. And so that all starts next week. So Mark chapter 1, verse 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place to pray. He prayed. Please pray. Reconnect. Regroup. And re-energize. All of these, man, reconnect, regroup, re-energize. These must be wrapped in prayer. Make prayer your custom. Pray for your church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for each other. And, as, and together as we begin to live into 2021, I hope you all have a happy new year. Be safe. Love God. Follow Christ. And always pray in the Spirit. Let's pray this morning. Almighty God, we thank you and praise you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together and worship you. We thank you that you give us 
your spirit so that we may be guided and directed into your will. Father, we thank you for everything that you do in and through us. We thank you for this time. And we ask your continued guidance into 2021. Lord, you are an awesome God. And we thank you for your love for us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, again, I, I pray that your new year is a blessed new year. Uh, until we meet again, God bless. Have a great week.